Mike, what was the inspiration for starting this podcast? It, it, it was an outgrowth of my life experiences. I wanted to write a book actually my whole life, but did not have the courage. Uh, I had developed some blinders that we call scotomas. And because I had been in special ed, uh, even though I have achieved academically post high school and flunking out of college the first time, I just didn't feel that I had anything important to write about. And it just reached a point after meeting up with a long lost friend, a Bernetta Nelson that's with us in Big Stevenson and Nelson, the company I work with now, she told me she had just published a book and she had a publishing company. And I said, well, doggone, if Bernetta can do that, I can do it too. And I pulled out my notes, rearranged them, and the concept came to me, finding your 100%, because that's what I was dealing with, believing that my 100% was just as good as Shakespeare, uh, Langston Hughes, and any other person that had written a book, and I had something to say. So what are some of the concepts you've written about in your book, Finding Your 100%? Well, the main concept is, it's not a destination, it's a journey. It's a journey in self-exploration, discovering your gifts, talents, and abilities, eliminating things that are really not your gifts and talents, uh, trying to remove opinions that you somehow made a fact about who you are and what you can do in life. And finding your 100% is about showing the uniqueness of every individual and how we contribute to this world uniquely, individually, is just as important, not based on academic achievement, financial success, but just knowing that we have given 100% of our efforts and talents. And I wanted to put that in a book and help people recognize that and know how to capitalize off of that information. So why did you write your book, The Finding Your 100%? As I said earlier, uh, I know how I have stumbled in life and self-doubt and lack of confidence. And of all the things I've done, there were still times in my life, and primarily through post-traumatic stress events I had, that was still preventing me from believing in all the gifts and talents that I had. And I knew after talking to other veterans and, and people in my life that it was not just me going through that experience, but that was a truth that many people have faced, that self-doubt. And this book is my contribution. It's not an end-all, be-all, it's not a silver bullet, but it's my contribution to that volume of written word that speaks to people's greatness and help them to overcome their fears and apprehensions about doing new and ex exciting and challenging things. So Mike, you mentioned scotomas. Please explain. Well, in achieving a well-balanced being curriculum that was developed by the Specific Institute uh, that we will be offering and training throughout our podcast for you to take, uh, that is a very key concept a scotoma is that which blinds us to things that are positive or negative in our life. We can't see what we don't know. If we don't have any understanding of what we're looking at, we will not understand how to process that. Well, it's new information, a new experience. Uh, scotomas are there, sometimes not knowing that we've developed them, and sometimes you know you've developed one. How many have been told by a parent, a teacher, someone in authority, you're not smart, uh, you're not athletic, uh, you're not this, you, you can never do that. And it may have been an opinion, and in some cases it may have been true. I would never be a brain surgeon. These hands are not made for that type of work. But I am a motivator, I am an inspirer. And whether it's in written word or spoken word, I had to remove the blindness that had me thinking I could only do it with spoken word and not written word. So it's those things which may have been opinions that consciously or subconsciously we turn into a fact and it has inhibited us from achieving our 100%. How did you develop this scotoma? Well, after much analysis and training, I'm able to identify where a lot of my scotomas came from. 
When I was in the third grade, I write about the experience I had of being pulled out of regular ed and placed into this new program they created in the 60s called Special Ed. And I write about the counselor, Mr. Richard Chittick. Loved that man so much. He, I ended up caring for him in his later years when he developed Alzheimer's. But he carried a spiral notebook, the little notebook you see the police officers and reporters writing in. And you knew if your name was in that book, that was not a good thing. So he came into our classroom, pulled his book out, and he was calling names out alphabetically. And I'm a B. So when he got to the bigs and my name was called, I knew my life had changed. They marched us out the room, lined us up in the hall, and took us down to what we felt like was a padded room, the room of shame and dread. So at that moment, I began to feel like I was a failure, uh, that I had less than average intelligence. And it would take years later to discover that I am dyslexic. And what was my learning disability? They did not labor, label it as dyslexia during that time. So I stumbled through high school, flunked out of college the first time, lost all confidence in ever graduating from college. It would take 10 years for me to get up enough nerve to go back to school and eventually graduate at age 30. That was one scotoma I had. The other one I developed with my father, um, you hear like when you like your parent, uh, that's when you have the most uh, issues. I'm probably more like my father than any of my siblings. I love hard work. I've always worked two or three jobs like him and very opinionated as he was. And that attitude that I carried toward him, he labeled as, I will never be successful. Matter of fact, the exact words was, you will never be nothing. And I carried that shame throughout my life. In my senior, junior year in high school, he developed uh, Lou Gehrig's disease and I cared for him my junior and senior year. He passed April 22nd, uh, a couple of a weeks prior to me graduating. And we never resolved that. He never lived to see me go in the military, have an outstanding career, graduate from college, father four children, provide for my family, work two and three jobs like he did. Uh, so it took years for me to erase that truth that I took into my life that I would not be nothing. And when I accomplished things, I felt like you're an imposter. You just got lucky. And uh, that was tough. And being raised in the segregated South, I shouldn't have to say anything more than that. Uh, you were inundated in a non-integrated community that I grew up in with words and symbols and just a lifestyle of being told you were less than. But fortunately, over time, I removed the scotomas, and then I saw opportunity and greatness.